If you were going to guess which member of the animal kingdom is the world's smartest cute one, who would you pick? Would you choose the family dog? They're not just our best friends, they are also very clever and love to learn new tricks. Or maybe you'd pick the cat. They're so smart, they don't do tricks unless they feel like it. Yes indeed, dogs and cats are mighty smart. But did you know there are lots of other animals too with amazing brains who use their noggins to perform all kinds of skills? Sometimes they use their talents to entertain people and learn all kinds of funny stunts from their human trainers. But some animals use the smarts they've learned on their own through nature and instinct to survive and to thrive and to figure out how to be happy. That makes them the brainiest of all the cute ones. Ah, just another day in paradise. If you're looking for the world's smartest animals, this might be a good place to start. You'd be pretty brainy to pick this as your home. And while there are indeed very clever animals who live in this part of the world, just about every part of the planet has at least one or two kinds of animals who are so smart you'd almost think they went to university. Of course, dogs are on the top 10 list. But did you know they can be as smart as a two-year-old human? And an African gray parrot can match the brain power of a three-year-old. Dolphins display complex human emotions. Goats can master puzzling tasks and remember the solution 10 months later. Rats, squirrels, Crows, pigs, and even bees are all very bright and go right to the head of the class. But pound for pound, the most impressively smart animal on everyone's top 10 list is the amazing elephant. The typical full-grown elephant brain weighs in at over 11 pounds, the largest in the animal world. In fact, it's almost four times as big as a human brain. Elephant brains are similar to ours in the way they function. Their cerebral cortex has just as many neurons as a human brain. That may explain why elephants are such fast learners and why they love to play just like people do. Elephants also know how to use people tools and they can exhibit a wide array of human emotions like grief, compassion, and cooperation. They're excellent communicators, even without words. And the old story about how an elephant never forgets is absolutely true. But despite their superior smarts, elephants are struggling to survive in the wild for a bunch of reasons, including lack of good food and water. A grown-up elephant eats about 150 kilos per day in vegetation, so a herd of 50 can devour 7.5 tons of leaves every day. And in the summer, each one drinks up to 200 liters of water. So as the natural environment shrinks, the elephants have to look farther and longer for suitable habitat. And that means they are more and more likely to run into poachers, who don't think twice about slaughtering these beautiful beasts for their ivory tusks. Luckily, conservationists are working hard for these endangered cute ones, and in some places, there are sanctuaries where elephants can live and learn in peace. Now this is the life. If you're an elephant who's been pushed out of her habitat, this is a sanctuary in Thailand where hundreds of elephants have been saved. The goal here is to protect the animals 
and also to get them used to living with the humans who want to protect them. Everybody loves making new friends kicking around a football, and elephants are no different. Check out that forward pass. Tourists who come to the sanctuary love to watch the elephants play, and the elephants have also been taught to do a few tricks to show off just how smart and adorable they are. Some visitors even get to enjoy a memorable elephant ride. But at this sanctuary, the real star of the show is named Hong. It's hard for us to imagine an elephant becoming a skilled painter. After all, he's a bit short-handed for such a task, but we couldn't have been more wrong. Hong and many other elephants have mastered the art of painting, and they're not just splashing paint on paper. They're painting actual self-portraits. Isn't that amazing? And if you ask an elephant how they can paint so beautifully, they'll tell you. It's all in the trunk. Their trunk has more than 40,000 muscles compared to just 840 in the entire human body. It's extremely strong, but also capable of precise movements. The trunk also has the equivalent of a human opposable thumb, so elephants can easily pick things up and manipulate tools, or wield paint and paintbrushes. At the sanctuary, over 100 elephants have been trained to paint. Some have dismissed the talent as simply a learned circus trick, and there have been concerns about harsh training techniques. But a noted London artist, Vanda Harvey, became intrigued with the story of the elephant artists. She traveled to Thailand to meet the elephants and try to determine the actual skill level of these painting pachyderms. She set up a tranquil outdoor studio away from the crowds of tourists at the sanctuary and showed Hong images of other abstract art to offer him inspiration. Hong seemed to be really intrigued with the paintings, touching them with his trunk to get a feel for how human artists work. Seems like he likes this one a lot. Elephant's vision is considered moderately good. Although they only have two cone color receptors in their eyes, red and green, where humans have three, red, green, and blue. However, elephants seem to be able to discriminate between different colors, despite this diminished color vision. African elephants have been able to distinguish between the Maasai tribes that kill elephants and the Kamba people, which typically don't. The Maasai always wear the color red, and some elephants who have been rescued in an area run by the Maasai are terrified by the color red. But what about recognizing and appreciating the complex colors and paintings by Vincent van Gogh? Hong and the other painter elephants do seem to choose particular colors they like and use over and over again. But when given the freedom to paint whatever he wants, what will Hong create? Hong chooses a few light, airy colors he will use, and then while Vanda holds his palette, Hong begins to create an abstract work based on the masterpieces he's just seen. Clearly, Hong is enjoying the freedom to express himself. 
and his dexterity is impressive as always, and his interaction with the artist is exciting to watch. The artist and the student create wonderful works of art that are eventually displayed at a London gallery. The critical reaction is positive and the show is a sellout. The money raised by the art show and also from the many tourists who enjoy the elephant shows at the sanctuary in Thailand are helping keep these incredible cute ones alive and well. The sanctuary can continue to do good work researching the best way to increase elephant herds and to take care of the incredible, intelligent, and talented elephants who will live here for many years to come. Far away from Thailand, across an ocean, and over the mountains, and into the jungle wilderness of Africa, we go to meet another one of the world's smartest cute ones. It's mankind's closest relative, the chimpanzee. Humans share over 98% of our DNA with chimps. And the chimps possess quite a bit of our brain power too. Look at these silly guys pretending they're important businessmen. You know, they're smart even without the tie. Doesn't he seem ready to work rolling up his sleeves? But seriously, chimpanzees in their natural habitat are so smart you won't believe what they can do all on their own. Scientists are learning new things from these cute ones every day. This is Japan's Primate Research Institute at Kyoto University. The chimps here are much more than research subjects. Scientists have bonded with the chimpanzees as friends and learned a tremendous amount about their intelligence. Researchers have built a giant play structure that's carefully designed to make the chimps feel at home. They spend most of the day here in their own version of an African forest. Then, tunnels lead back to the lab where the researchers study their cute buddies. They know that chimpanzees can learn words play with objects, and even express very deep feelings, like being very sad when one of their friends is sick or injured. Like in humans, genes determine about half of chimp intelligence and environmental factors the other half. They can make and use tools for simple tasks, like opening fruits and nuts. Studies have even shown that they can fashion spears to hunt smaller prey and they use long branches to dig for termites. This curious little chimp is named Ayumi. She used a small branch like a spoon to get a treat inside a narrow mouth bottle. That's using her smarts, Ayumi. But where she really shines is in the lab, where this clever girl scores much higher in this memory game than most people do. Ayumi can repeat the exact sequence of the numbers after seeing the display for just a split second. Even if the people in the study are allowed to look at the numbers for a much longer time, Ayumi and her chimp friends score higher 90% of the time. And to embarrass us even further, chimps show they are some of the best communicators on the planet. This adorable mama chimpanzee can point to pictures in this book to express herself clearly to the researcher she's working with. Today, she has something special in mind. She points to the combination of pictures that clearly lets her human know she wants to take a car ride. A chimpanzee sitting in the front seat isn't something you see every day, and she's even bright enough to buckle her seatbelt. Taking a ride in the car is this chimpanzee's favorite activity. She loves the fresh breeze blowing through her hair. And it's an especially good day when they end up at her favorite picnic spot. You can't get much smarter than requesting a relaxing day lounging outside in the park. Now isn't this fun, she says, 
and asks for another glass of lemonade, please. This rugged and scenic part of the world is in Australia. And that's where you'll find wild horses who are sleek, sensitive, and amazingly smart. In Australia, these superb athletes are known as Brumbies. Typically, the Brumbies run in small herds known as bands or mobs. They're constantly on the move, searching for rich grazing opportunities. With great speed and stamina on their side, the wild horses have few natural predators. But life for the Brumbies is very difficult in the remote outback. And they've had to develop some amazingly clever strategies for living in some of the driest, harshest land in the world. Here temperatures can easily exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In the outback, water is more valuable than gold. Knowing how to sniff out watering holes can be a matter of life and death for these graceful beauties. And being able to communicate with the rest of the herd is essential to the Brumby's survival. Horses are very bright animals. We know ones in captivity can match human voices to faces, and they can recognize human emotions. In fact, they're so tuned in to the thoughts and feelings of others, they can perceive emotions just by looking at a photograph. Also, horses can learn and make associations. Some can show they need a blanket by touching their muzzles to a sign. And horses somehow know how to pass on all that knowledge to their babies. Even this precious young one is already learning from mama. In the outback, male brumbies are quick to secure their place at a watering hole and demonstrate dominance. Kangaroos know better than to try to muscle in. A cool bath is a smart idea for the band. The less powerful brumbies need to be even more innovative than the stronger horses. It's a classic case of brains over brawn. And when the going gets tough, Brumbies dig for water below the surface to find underground springs to quench their thirst. These ingenious animals have used their heads just in time to cool down before they set out on their next great run through the outback. Such magnificent creatures. They are just thrilling to watch. In East Africa, there's a very clever, cute one that lives in the wild, but often outsmarts its human neighbors. Vervet monkeys aren't picky about where they live. Up in the mountains or down in the woodlands, both are fine with them. They do like places where there is water nearby and juicy leaves to munch on. Oh, and they really like hanging out near where people are. The vervet monkeys have discovered all kinds of ways to make the most of living near humans. Where other animals might avoid people, these charming cute ones have learned how to take advantage of their people neighbors. Vervets are clever little thieves, very skilled at stealing food, raiding crops, and even finding treats in the trash. Vervets have their own monkey towns made up of small family groups called troops. The troops can range from 10 to 50 monkeys. And with so many monkeys in the family, 
there are a lot of rules about how everyone is supposed to get along. There are rules about who eats what and when, who's friends with who, when they are allowed to fight, and when it's best to get along. That's a lot to remember for a monkey. There are even rules about grooming. They spend several hours each day removing parasites and dirt from one another's fur. This fellow seems to be asking, Hey you, isn't it my turn yet? The rest of the vervet's day is spent mostly in trees, looking for fruits, leaves, and tender shoots. Sometimes a juicy bug will bring them down to the ground. Ooh, that one has a bit of a hard shell. Vervets rarely drink water, but strangely, they are fans of humans' cocktails. Sometimes they like to trespass and head for a little adventure. Vervets are famous for their street smarts. In the tourist hotel areas, their cheeky attitude is famous. They are well known as cunning thieves. This vervet has an eye on a target, a bar offering fresh drinks. He seems to be trying to figure out how to get the drink without that pesky human shooing her away. But the treasure is well guarded. The vervet doesn't know that she is part of a hidden camera experiment. The researchers are trying to find out how smart the vervet is. Which cup will she steal? The one that's open or the one that's guarded by the human? The little thief approaches. She heads right for the cup out of the eye line of the volunteer. She's confident she'll safely snatch her prize. The vervet's undercover mission demonstrates an ability to put herself in another animal's shoes and view things from a different perspective. This is complex thinking, approaching behavior reserved for human beings. So there are many members of the animal kingdom with wits that rival our own. We're still confident that we are the most brilliant creatures on the planet. But maybe we should give that some more thought. There's no doubt that there are some other impressive thinkers out there. Some elephants may be better artists than we are. And chimpanzees may have sharper memories. There are horses with way better survival skills than ours. And monkeys who may eventually commit the perfect crime. Perhaps we humans need to start giving these animals more credit as being not just cute ones, but serious smart ones too. In the very coldest part of our planet, it's hard to imagine that any animal could survive under so much ice and snow. But look closely, and you'll find that in the Arctic, there's a surprising mix of furry and friendly looking creatures who have adapted to this frigid land. From clever foxes and cunning wolves roaming the icy tundra to furry sea otters and silly walruses catching a few Zs on the frozen coast. These are some of the hardiest members of the animal kingdom. And whether they are potato-shaped or wearing an impressive fur coat, they are without a doubt wonderful Arctic cute ones. The Arctic is the northernmost part of our planet, a mostly frozen land of long, brutally cold winters and short summers that can be sunshiny but still freezing cold. It's not the kind of place where you'll find cities and towns full of people, but lots of other kinds of creatures love to call the Arctic their home. These are what you might call the tough cookies of the animal world. 
unbelievably hardy breeds of wildlife uniquely adapted to their environment. And oh, so very cute. This fluffy cute one might look like a husky dog, but it's actually a fox, an Arctic fox to be exact. An incredibly hardy animal that actually enjoys the cold, even when temperatures plunge to 45 below Celsius. How do they do it? Well, that round, compact body isn't just for added cuteness. Their shape actually minimizes the surface area that's exposed to the cold. So it's easier for them to stay warm. And their short muzzle, ears, and legs also conserve heat. And that wonderful bushy tail does double duty as a comfy, warm blanket. The first thing you notice about an Arctic fox is their amazingly soft white fur. And that cuddly coat is for more than just show. Fox fur is very thick and dense, which helps these cute ones maintain a consistent body temperature. And that thick coat goes all the way down to the bottom of their paws, so Arctic foxes can walk very comfortably on the frozen terrain. The Arctic fox is a great hunter, picking out tender morsels where other animals might see only white snow. What makes the Arctic fox such a great hunter? Well, partly it's those front-facing ears that help them hear even the teeny, tiniest sound of scurrying under the snow. Lemmings are a favorite dish. The fox jumps in the air and smashes into the snowpack, cracking open the lair where the lemmings hide. The Arctic fox doesn't have many predators, but polar bears definitely are known to enjoy the occasional fox for an appetizer. The bears may be the area's apex predator, but the fox's white fur and athletic prowess means there's plenty of time to get away before the polar bears even notice the sly fox. Foxes are so confident in their stealth ability that they even follow the polar bears around so they can scavenge the leftovers from their meals. Luckily, this fox happens on a caribou that was the polar bear's most recent dinner. That's what a fox calls a dinner to go. As the ice begins to melt and summer approaches, the fox's fur changes from white to different shades of tan and brown. That way, the fox can blend in with the tundra's exposed rocks and plants. Their seasonal wardrobe is very important when they are hunting for food. Camouflage is always in fashion if you're an Arctic fox. And this female has a good reason to spend so much time hunting. She's eating for two, or three, or more. Female Arctic foxes give birth each spring to a large litter of up to 14 pups. That's a lot of very cute mouths to feed. The fox's summer diet is more varied than in the winter. Rodents, rabbits, birds, eggs and fish are all on the menu. And home is also different in the summer. Instead of tunneling out a burrow in the snow, the foxes build large summertime dens for their families. These are complex systems of rooms and tunnels that can cover over 1,000 square meters. dens may last decades and are used by many generations of foxes. Arctic foxes usually mate for life and both mom and dad help care for and raise the many pups. And when the hunting is done for the day, the grown-ups guard their lair, keeping a watchful eye out for predators so the cubs can eat dinner in safety and then get back to playtime with all their cute and cuddly brothers and sisters. If you come to this part of the Arctic, you might be lucky enough to hear the howling of wolves echoing through the mountains. 
and see their tracks making trails across the frozen tundra. But these are not ordinary wolves. They are Arctic wolves. And their beautiful white fur is the perfect camouflage for life in their snow-packed home. Millions of years of evolution have helped these wolves adapt to living in this extreme Arctic wonderland. Their fur is actually made up of two different layers. The outer layer gets thicker in the winter months, and the inner layer of fur is actually waterproof. It keeps these fluffy friends dry and comfy. And their paws are really special too. They're furry like the foxes, but also have special non-slip padding to give them a good grip when they walk on a slippery frozen ground. Right now, the spring thaw has begun, and this pack of Arctic wolves is searching for their next meal. In this harsh environment, food is scarce, but springtime offers a chance to make a really big score. The pack works together as a highly choreographed hunting party. Their strength in numbers, and a hunting pack can have up to a dozen members. By working together, Arctic wolves can take down prey many times their size. Even huge animals like caribou and musk ox. Once they've brought down their prey, the wolves aren't greedy. They take turns feeding while the other members of the team are protecting their dinner from other animals. Arctic wolves can eat more than 20 pounds of meat at a time. That's quite a meal. They know that it may be a while before they have another successful hunt, so they eat as much as possible. The wolf packs are very close. These are their families. They do everything together because their survival depends on cooperation and concern for one another. Young, strong wolves help find food and protect the older wolves. The older wolves educate the young and teach them how to get by in this rugged environment. Some wolves in this pack are still quite young and not very experienced in handling life in the Arctic. This young female lets her curiosity get the best of her and wanders off to explore. She doesn't realize that the rest of the pack has moved on. She's now alone and doesn't know how to hunt very well. This could be a very dangerous situation for the young Arctic wolf. She tries to hunt some ducklings in a pond they should be sitting ducks for a young wolf. But this cute girl hasn't had the benefit of going to hunting school. An instinct alone isn't enough for her to trap a meal. And the ducks have had a lot of practice learning how to evade predators. They dive deep and swim just far enough away from the shore where the wolf won't go. The wolf is frustrated and worried. Where is mom and dad? Where is her pack? Perhaps she's a little frightened now, and definitely getting very hungry. Alone and away from her pack, this wolf might soon starve. But the pack is looking for her. Wolf packs stick together, and they instinctively know when one member is lost or in danger. They howl in hopes that she will hear them. Wolves howl for many reasons. They call out to assemble the pack before and after hunts. They also howl to warn neighboring packs of their presence. Now they are using a special kind of howl that can be heard over long distances and that the missing wolf will recognize as howling coming from her family. But this young cute one is out of earshot and she's getting desperately hungry. The lone Arctic wolf finds another pond and spots some white geese. She tries again for a meal, but the birds outsmart her. They're much more agile in the water than the young wolf who isn't an expert swimmer. Meanwhile, her pack refuses to give up. 
and luckily they spot their wayward cute one in the water. Here comes Mama to reunite her cub with the pack. She's so happy to have this cute one home safely. And Dad is too. Northern Alaska is home to all kinds of majestic wildlife, caribou and bear, elk and even reindeer. But hands down, the absolute cutest creature in this vast wilderness is the sea otter. Just look at that absolutely irresistible little face. Sea otters are marine mammals that live in a lot of different places along the Pacific coast. And these guys who think lots of snow and icy water is the best way to live. Most marine mammals who call the Arctic home stay warm with thick layers of fat called blubber. But not the cute and cuddly sea otter. Instead, this slim and trim cutie has very dense fur. In fact, sea otters have the thickest fur in the animal kingdom. Incredibly, they have up to a million hairs per square centimeter. That's 100,000 times as much hair as you have on your head. This fantastic fur actually consists of two layers, an undercoat and longer guard hairs. This fur system traps a layer of air next to their skin, so the otter's skin barely gets wet. It makes doing the backstroke and having a little snack oh so comfy. Sea otters are one of the smallest of all the marine mammals, but that doesn't mean they're puny. Full-grown Alaskan otters can weigh in at about 40 kilos. And pound for pound, they're some of the strongest cuties in the sea. When baby otters are born, they're only about two kilos and depend on their moms for food. But these adorable aquatic clowns grow fast and quickly learn how to take care of themselves. Their favorite foods are anything with a shell, and believe it or not, they're one of the few animals that has figured out how to use tools to get their dinner. Otters lay on their backs, place a sharp, pointy stone on their chest, and then, kapow! They smash the shells of the creatures they catch against the rock. Exposing the delicious meat inside the shell. Have you ever seen such a clever, cute one? Arctic otters, like all their sea otter cousins, are most comfortable on their backs, drifting with the tides, whether they're sleeping or eating. Sometimes, the ocean can get rough along the Arctic coastline. But these smart and adorable creatures have figured out an ingenious way to stay afloat even when the going gets tough. Arctic otters have figured out how to lie on top of kelp forests and drape themselves in seaweed to keep from drifting away. You're rarely going to find a sea otter on the land. They love to swim and dive and play with their friends. Otters are what you would call very social cute ones. There aren't very many loners in this group, and everyone seems to be in on the party. Sea otters have the perfect body for life in the sea. They have webbed feet, and their nostrils and their ears close up when they're underwater. That way, an otter can safely dive over 100 meters down into the ocean in search of the tastiest shellfish. 
and they store what they catch in the loose skin folds under their armpits. It's like their personal shopping basket. And when one otter comes up with a big catch, she's more than happy to share not only with her pups, but also with the rest of the family. It's not always smooth sailing for sea otters living in northern Alaska. Storms and high tides can make it almost impossible for these adorable mammals to stay afloat. And hunting foods is really difficult. But sea otters are extremely strong and smart. They can dive under the waves to keep from smashing against the shore and stay close to their families to keep the cross currents from carrying them too far away from their loved ones. And sea otters know that patience pays off because eventually the ocean will calm down. It always does. And then these amazing enchanting animals can go back to doing what they do best, hanging out with their friends and families, chowing down, and just being cute ones. From the land of the otters, the smallest of all the Arctic sea mammals, we travel across the ice flows of northernmost North America to visit with one of the biggest cute ones of the Arctic. Walruses do kind of look like enormous lumbering baked potatoes. But those tusks, those massive bodies, make walruses seem so intimidating and frightening. But in fact, walruses are not at all aggressive. They're actually known as the gentle giants of the Arctic. Walruses are built to survive in even the chilliest parts of the Arctic. Like sea otters, wolves, and foxes, they're very social animals. Walruses think everything is more fun in a crowd. And an ice floe is the perfect spot for a walrus slumber party. They spend most of the day relaxing, napping, and making small talk. Maybe this one is saying, hey buddy, can you uh, scratch a little to the left? Sunbathing herds can number in the hundreds or even in the thousands during mating season. Real estate is at a premium on a walrus beach, and sometimes these cute ones have to really pack in like sardines. It's a peaceful gathering, until someone gets spooked. Then there could be a sudden walrus stampede. Very dangerous. A full-grown walrus can be over three meters long and weigh over 1,200 kilos. And when everyone is trying to get in the water at once, the littler guys are in danger of getting trampled. It's amazing how fast these beasts can move when they have to. Walruses spend about two-thirds of their lives in the water. The herds swim and hunt together, and their imposing numbers keep them safe from predators. They can also dive more than 100 meters below the surface and hold their breath for up to 30 minutes at a time. Walruses eat all sorts of sea creatures. They're not very picky, but their first choice is clams. To find them, walruses dive down to the sea floor and search the sand with their sensitive whiskers. Once they find a big, tasty clam, they've worked out a special way to get at the meat inside the shell. The walrus will seal its lips to the clam's shell and then quickly pull its tongue back into its mouth. This creates a vacuum that sucks the meat right out of the shell. In the springtime, when the sea ice starts to melt, this is a signal to the grown-ups that it's time to find a mate and set up housekeeping. And you can't be shy about it when you're a walrus because no matter where you go, you're going to have a thousand of your closest buddies right there beside you. These adorable behemoths might look a little clumsy on land, but don't let their blubbery good looks fool you. Walruses can move surprisingly fast on their flippers. In fact, they can run as fast as a human, and they're even quicker in the water, topping 39 kilometers per hour if they're really hustling. Undoubtedly, the walrus's most famous feature is their large front teeth. The tusks can be more than one meter long. Besides being rather scary looking, they have all sorts of incredible uses. Walruses use their tusks like a club to defend against predators or other walruses. The walrus's public enemy number one is the polar bear. And when a walrus group gets wind that one is in the area, they become agitated. 
A hungry polar bear can be a threat to younger, less agile walruses. And this particular bear's lean appearance tells the group this one is very hungry. Then the polar bear starts to attack. The largest male walruses move to the rear and use their imposing tusks to signal they're not going to give up without a fight. The polar bear tries and fails to get a meal. And the herd scurries into the water where they have a much better chance of fleeing from the threat. The walruses are safe again in the sea, as the polar bear thinks better of starting a fight. He hasn't heard that the walruses are gentle giants and really just enormous cute ones. So despite the many challenges for an animal living in the Arctic, these incredible creatures are more than up to the task. What seems like a desolate, unforgiving landscape to us is home to some of nature's furriest, funniest cute ones. Arctic foxes with their summer and winter wardrobes. Wolves who have non-slip paws. Clever sea otters. And sociable walruses. They've all mastered life in this frigid wilderness. And spend their days enjoying life, raising families, and just being themselves, which means being cute ones.